What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Tony D2 Wild checking in once again back with the Bang of the Day guys on a very classic firearm in the building. And today, guys, we're giving you guys my first mag on Kalashnikov USA's KP9. Today, guys, I'm extremely happy to present to you guys my first mag on the Kalashnikov KP9 because this itself is a very historical firearm. Originally released back in 2004, a variant or a successor, I would say, of the PP Bison. The KP9 is pretty much, as you guys can see, an AK variant chambered in nine millimeter, and more specifically, blowback nine millimeter than the typical gas operated AK-47 that we're used to. So there's a direct blowback going on in this gun that is different than its AK-47 counterpart. Also being said, a variant of the AK-74U. And the nickname Vit Yas, which was, I believe is called Brave Warrior or Brave Soldier. Forgive me, I'll make sure to say the proper terminology in the text or something down below. But this has been a gun I've been wanting to add to the list for quite some time. And, and Kalashnikov USA are the people to go for that because they're the only ones that make the authentic KP9 Vit Yas right now and all usa made made in florida to be specific now you guys might have seen another gun on this channel the akv also usa made by paul metal state armory which is their version of the kp9 or vit yes however kalashnikov is making a direct authentic version of it there's nothing in this gun that is different than the original model that was used or still being used over in russia this has all authentic parts clone correct whatever you want to call it and they did a phenomenal job on that there are some differences of course from this and the akv as stated but if you are someone who wants the kp9 who wants that bit yes and you have to decide between the akv or a kp9 this is where you want to go so no shot to psa whatsoever I'm just calling it down the middle. I really like the AKV, but the thing is, is the reason why I like the AKV is because it looked like the KP9, and the KP9 is what we have here. With that all being said, this gun itself, amazing, comes with a 9.25 inch barrel, comes threaded and with a muzzle device. The threading on this is a half by 28, so any of your typical suppressors on there can go on this gun. And I do plan on doing a follow up video running this with my R9, so stay tuned on that. The Picatinny dust cover, of course, is hinged. So a little bit different than other AK models is all hinged, so, you know, bam. Now, as far as it returning to zero and all that, how well that does i'm pretty sure for the most part it does that pretty well and this being a compact model very good for close quarters but also capable of reaching out to 600 feet if need be with the proper type of equipment i decided to put my met pro m21 on here for now it definitely looks good with that retro type of vibe the vit yaz was originally developed in 2004 so you know i wanted to give it something that matched up pretty well with it and the m21 being something that's around 20 years old as well these things came out at around the same exact time so you know something i thought that was you know dope the mags here are proprietary of course they are polymer on the outside but i believe they're steel on the inside or steel lined on the inside or just metal line i would say that i don't know what kind of metal but it is not as flimsy as it may look with this plastic right here as well as this plastic everything is very very solid i love the grip on here a very standard blank grip no type of texture very just soft but there's no issue as far as how to hold it or needing to hold it i mean it's a nine millimeter at the end of the day it shoots flawlessly and i love the just standard trigger that it comes with it it is not as i would say curved as typical ak type of triggers that i have at least have right now it has a slight straightness to it it's not all the way straight right but it doesn't have a crazy curve it still has like somewhat of a almost flat face to it at least when i'm putting my finger on it and just tapping away at it now one of the main differences of this compared to the akv but as stated before this is what this is the like real deal so there is differences but the akv does have a last bolt open this however it doesn't just like ak-47s they just you know and that last mag it's gonna go you also got of course the same type of safety mechanism a lot of the similar parts that are on ak-47s and a lot of these furniture parts can be interchanged from the ak-47 onto the kp9 so just keep that in mind one in particular also the hinged stock which is forgot the name of it it's like 3.4 millimeter or there's 4.4 whatever it's it's a hinge stock okay that you can just take out the pin and put on whether it's the polymer hinge stock 
a triangle metal hinge stock as this one or you could put on just a slick qd adapter if you don't want to run it with a stock it's up to you really depending on that and depending on what state you live in as far as how the stock works pretty typical standard as any other ak you press the button and there's a little there's a little like thing right here right a little notch that you want to put above and then bam it locks in place now i didn't know about this right because i did that when I first put it on, I didn't like, I did that and I was like, how the hell do I get it off? Is there a button? Because it reminds me a little bit of my mini M14, which is like, if there's a button. Now maybe there's another way to do it. I don't know, but I just know that you got, I had to push up. It's like slightly push up and then it just comes right back out. And then bam, there you go. You got your little sling hinge right here as well as on this side. So it's easy just to put your sling on and just get ready to go. Whichever type of way you decide on putting a sling, that is of course. And I mean, this gun, it shoots phenomenally. It's super flat, super lightweight. The nine millimeter just taps away. And yeah, it's very competitive to that of the MP5. I love the MP5 and it's one of the most softest shooters I've ever experienced from, I would say what a two-handed gun in some sorts, I would say like an, an SBR, a rifle, any type of platform you got. Cause I got the Scorpion, I got a Vector, I got an MP5, and now I got a KP9, right? I thought the Vector was super smooth when I first shot it. Then I got the MP5 and was like, what the hell have I been missing out on, right? And then bringing it up here against the KP9, it's very, very, very close. Now, as I stated before, like when it comes to like a PCC for home defense, which I'm all for at the end of the day, right? I love the MP5 being one of the softest shooters. If it is the softest shooter, it still would not be something that I would say I would go home defense with because of the way of the reloading mechanisms and all that. I'm just not for all that. That's why I chose the Scorpion over that. Vector, cool, but different ergonomics that I'm not really used to, but the KP9, this guy right here, this is definitely something I can get behind as far as for home defense because of how easy it is to load it up, how easy it is to rack it back and go, and just how easy overall the build is. It's not that much going on, and at the same time, it's extremely solid in the feel, the material, and it's an AK, man. Regardless of it being a 9mm AK, it's an AK, and it's wanting to be beat up. It's wanting to be shot. And Kalashnikov sent over a thousand rounds of steel ammunition, Tula ammunition that is, for me to run through this bad boy. So we might just do a full on video shooting a thousand rounds through this. So make sure you guys and girls are, you know, staying in tune on that. Kalashnikov, when it comes to what they've been doing, man, they are the most truest when it comes to the AK platform and its authenticity of what they are trying to make. From their AK-103s, their KP-9s, they got an AK-104, and they're in the process now of making the AK-101 that plenty of people have been waiting for. So they have a whole AK-100 series that they've been working on for a couple years now that hopefully we get down the road. And also I did ask about the situation that had arise a couple of maybe years back or a year back of the outer battery discharge that was going on and they said that that was something that, that they hopped on extremely fast to fix and for the most part there has not been any more of those issues happening moving forward so that's something as well that was dope that people used to compare the akv to the kp9 saying you know you get this you get that right now all in all though me personally after shooting both, this is the way to go. This is the way. Now it's not, like I said, it's not that knock a AKV whatsoever, but when you sit back and think like why you like the AKV, the reason why you like the AKV and you might not even know is because you really like the KP9. This is what it's all about. And when it comes to authenticity, Kalashnikov USA, they're bringing that. Not to knock, like I said, PSA, what they're doing. I love it, I own PSAs, but for what I'm wanting now, which is that authenticity, that clone correctness in a way, and something that you can have and kind of collect along with it, this is the way. Also has a Picatinny dust cover, even though you can't see it, but obviously with this optic here, so extremely dope there. So you don't have to worry about the folding stock or have to worry about some sort of adapter to put on here to add an optic on. The Picatinny rail allows it very, very easily. Whether I'm gonna leave this thing stock or not, that's something for me to decide down the road. There's definitely the Krebs Customs, I think maybe Kalashnikov may be making some new stuff as well. They do have the Baradis Alpha handguard for their AK-100 series, which is extremely dope. Like a, a Zinico type of version made over here. And I'm looking forward to them to make something like that for this. And, you know, maybe down the road, switch things up a little bit. So, you know, I'll let you know and I'll let you see. And also something I just noticed, which I didn't know till later, there is like a slight Picatinny slot right here. So you got a light that has that little Picatinny adapter. You can run a mini light out here or a bayonet or, I mean, there's probably various things that you can run 
right here on this bad boy. And there's a hole right here for a cleaning rod. Maybe that's what it is for the cleaning rod or something. I don't know. But the muzzle device, extremely easy to take off as well. You just press down that pin and then just turn it off and it's easy to go. And then you can put on your muzzle device if you're choosing or suppressor if you're choosing. So stay tuned because we're going to be doing a suppressor video on this bad boy very, very soon. Let me know you guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section on the KP9. I love it. It's amazing and stay tuned for much much more after shooting this i definitely want to try out the kalashnikov usa's ak-103 and compare it to psa's 103 which i already have now because there are some differences with that one as well the same way with the akv the psa model is a more modern model i believe based on the internals what i've seen from various videos out there that the ak-103 from psa is more based off of the akm model and i know that the kr-103 is more clone correct to the actual ak-103 that was developed and put into the military for Russia. So I wanna see the differences and I just wanna, you know, test them out. But the KP9, amazing, amazing, amazing. And it's just beautiful. I mean, just look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Just look at it. But stay tuned, thousand round review coming very soon. I'm gonna keep you guys updated on this bad boy and I love y'all, I appreciate y'all and I'm out. Peace.